Hey team, welcome back to my channel. I'll explain how to use the data annotations in this video in a straightforward manner that you can use in your own solutions. I hope you find this video useful. You can find the source code for this project at the following address. Let's create a new project. File, new, project. C Sharp Windows Console, let's do .NET Core Console. Name of our project will be called Validate with Data Annotations. Hit Next, .NET 6, and now we have our project. Let's add a package, right click, Manage NuGet Packages. Come in here and say Annotations, Browse, give it a second, System Component Model Annotations, Install. OK. Let's add a C Sharp class object. Right click, say Add Class. Name of our class object will be Item. And then press Add. Turn this to Public. Let's add one using statement using System Component Model dot Data Annotations. Let us add our properties to this class. So public int item ID get set. Public string short description get set. Public string GL code get set. And our last field public date time. And we're going to call that create date. Those are our four fields. Let's hit save. Let's make sure we have these two using statements, using system and then using system component model data annotation. Then let's come inside of our main method and let's put in var item equals new item object. Let us set item dot item ID equals item one. Then let's set item short description equals item short description. And then we have the next variable and that was going to be item.gl code equals GLA1234. And our last field is the create date. Let's just set that to item create date equals date time now. And there we have populated our item. So we declared a variable of type item instantiate, and then I applied some values to each of these properties. And then I just wrote this one liner that said insert into table, and I'm going to pass that item into this method. And this method will do something like uh, maybe insert, maybe even do console print. Let's do that. Console dot write line, and I'm just going to write out. Uh, item dot item ID. So very easy, you know, whenever we do an insert, I'm just going to console print that out. But before I do that, let's make sure that we have some basic rules for this. As you can see here, we added the data annotations attribute required to each of the properties of the class object item. This is just the first of three steps we will need to perform to make the data annotations perform their magic. Let's now add two methods to test these attributes and see if it's valid. So we got two methods we need to write. So public void, we're going to get back to the return value in just a moment, and we're going to call this is item valid. And its input is going to be actually of item and we're going to call that variable item. So you can imagine this. These attributes that we've assigned to this class are now going to get tested and it's going to be tested in this is item valid. Now this method should return a list of errors if it is needed an error. We'll get back to this in a moment. But this next method just will print out the error messages. So public void show errors and it just takes a list of strings and errors. And I'm just going to print them to the console. Let's begin by setting up our return type. So I'm going to say var error messages 
equals new list of validation result. And this is going to be my return value. So instead of void, I want it to be a list of type validation result. And the input to show errors will be that same list type. Hope that makes sense. All right, cool. Now the next thing we need to do is start working on validating it. So our first step is going to say var context equals new validation and context. Now its input parameter requires the class object and that is going to be of type item and we're calling this item. Perfect. That's step one. Now step two is we actually have to do the validator try validate object. Now it's kind of simple. So what we're going to say is bool rv return value equals validator and then the name of that method is going to be called try validate object. Now the first parameter notice here is the instance. So we're going to say the instance is item. Now the second one is this validation context. Well that's what we call this on line 26 the context. And the third one is our our results you know like our errors. So we're going to put that into error message. And our fourth one is a boolean and it's saying do you want to validate all the properties? And we're going to say true. That's perfect. So when we validate this, if everything is good, this is going to be true. If I find an error in there, it'll be false. An error message will be populated. So here we're just going to return a true or false and continue. So if RV is false, then we're going to say return what are we going to return? Well, we're going to return the error message. Remember, this is, we declared it as a list validation result. Error message is the input parameter to this and it gets updated with a list of errors. Now, if RV is true, we're going to return null. Now, because that's nullable, I need to make this whole return value nullable. And there you have is item valid. Let's write the show errors method. So to loop over all the data, we're going to use for each. So for each. Now IntelliSense pops up and says var error in errors. Well, that's perfect. And then we're going to console each of them out. So that will be console dot write line. And let's do a little bit of something more sophisticated, kind of like a string dot format. Now we're going to say error colon and then error. Nice semicolon that finishes that up. Our return value is a void, so we don't need to say return, and show errors is complete. Let's now call is item valid. So over here in our method, notice our return value is a list validation result. Look, it's nullable. Let's make sure we use that. Control C. So now we're going to say, now what is our variable? Our variable will be errors equals now we're actually calling the item and it has that method in there. Is it valid? And we're going to send item. So that seemed pretty simple, right? So here's our method. It's possible to return null. And if it has errors, it will be uh, validation results inside of errors. Now that we have that, we can say if errors not equal null, what does that mean? Not equal null. That means it has some data. We have errors. So I'm going to say, item dot show errors and then we're going to pass in errors. Now if I don't have any errors, well that means I can actually do the insert statement. So we'll say um, insert into table and we're going to pass item. So notice here we need to get out of here, return, and I believe this code will work perfect just the way we had planned. Let's run it real fast. I'll put a breakpoint on line 16. Run this. Now we have all our data as you can see. I'm going to hit F11. I'm going to come through here. Error message. Context. And then here's my validator. Now the return value is true. So it is valid. So F10. I'm going to return null. And then if errors not equal null, I'm going to skip this and then do the insert F10, F11, and I just outputted one. Well, that's not enough information. Let's change that, rerun it, and let's put some errors in here. So in our next example, notice I set GL code to be empty. 
and I changed the insert to just kick out some JSON looking code here. Pretty simple, right? Now we know that inside of our class object, we have a required attribute assigned to GL code. Now this will fail because of line 13 here. Let's set a breakpoint on line 19 as well as 16. Let's do it. F10, F11, validate it. It comes back as false. Notice error message count is one and it says the GL code is required. I'm going to return the message. The message goes into errors. If errors not equal null, then I have errors. F11, then I'm going to print that out. And notice we got error GL code is required. In our next example, notice that we're going to use string length and regular expression. Well, got a problem with this. You can only use one of these. For instance, regular expression, this expression evaluates to eight characters. And string length will not be used if regular expression is a given. So you have to pick one of these. If you don't need the pattern, then turn off regular expression and you only want to test the length. If you want to test the expression, you need the regular expression. So for this example, I need to get rid of this string length because it will not execute. You can try it on your own and test it out. And if you can get that to work, please let me know. So here it goes. So I have an expression starts with G H K L M N A C and then an underscore and then the numbers zero through nine. I just want four sequential numbers and that finishes it. Now notice if you get an error, I give you out what the pattern should look like. Let's run this. Notice my is G L P and then I don't have an underscore and I have four numbers. This should fail. And then we're going to step in there, 11. I get an error message. The error message is first letters. Okay, perfect, F10. And then I'm going to show those errors and we are done. As you can see here, the error is first letter needs to be G, H, or K. And I got a G, second L, M, N, K. A or C, I put a P there and there is no underscore. So let's fix that and I want an A there, I want an underscore, and let's try to rerun this and see if it works. Let's continue, F11, F11 gets in there. I'm gonna to try to validate. The return value is true. Returning true, I'm not gonna show any error messages because the errors is null. F10, show me some output. And there's my output. And that was the second example. In this example, we're going to be using min length three, max length five. So the character has to be between three and five characters. Notice here we're using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In this example, we will see the max will fail because the max length is five. My character set value is eight. Let's run this. Step through F11. I failed my error message maximum length five. So there's how you use min length and max length. And there you have it team, data annotations. Remember, this project and others are on my GitHub account. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them below. Or if you have a suggestion for other video topics, please leave them in the comment section as well. Okay team, that's a wrap. Take care.